it was set in a kind of timeless sort of place and time. You know, in other words, like we did, we it was sort of a the city, the world that this character is in, the the, the environment was sort of a like a kind of a, every it was like a generic city and a generic time. It, um, My son is very sick. Something got inside of him. Don't go any closer. No! Get off me! Is he gonna die? How's it going? <laughs> going all right. All right snowstorm here in chicago so you know oh is it right really i should they still got the the year, you know? up, but... huh? i'm like late in a year you're thinking like spring's coming soon but then it's a reminder you know where you live that's <laughs> not quite yet yeah i bet i mean you guys had that cold spell a couple of weeks back that was pretty oh yeah weird. oh yeah the the yeah the, the dangerously freezing yep right uh yep. it's time to move back to la for me that's what <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Well, I'm in Malta right now, and the weather is just perfect. I heard. What are you doing out there? Are you filming something or just vacationing? No, no, getting, uh, preparing, prepping a movie that we're going to shoot here um, in the next couple months. Um, so in the process of doing that, yeah. So That's another... fantastic. I'm looking yeah. forward to been a longtime fan of your work. So I'm, I'm, it's a okay. treat for me to talk to you. You know, some of my favorite movies are done by you. Oh, cool, um, man. So, hey, this one, I'll tell you one thing about Blood. Like, first, like, 45 minutes, I thought it was like a drama, like a family sort of drama, like divorced parents and, you know, kids hurt, and then it just hates you, you know what I mean? And it doesn't yeah. stop. Um, yeah. I'm curious, was it like this side? Of, I, I love the fact that it eases you into it, you know what I mean? Like, right. you get invested in these characters, like, oh, it's kind of like a family thing, a mother struggling here, and, you know, a, a young family, you know, and all that, and... uh the divorce and bam, you know, was that the setup too? like intentionally that, that it happened or just sort of worked itself out that it was like almost felt like a tale of two movies. Yeah. I think that is sort of the idea is like kind of teeing up the relationships between the family and the fact that this woman is a single mom, struggling single mom, like dealing with her own addiction issues and so forth. And yeah. the custody battle between her and her husband, you know, I mean, only because of what she's going to have to go through once the bad stuff starts to happen, you know, I mean, and that, and I like those kind of movies that, that sort of ease you in, you know, I yeah. mean, you know, we kind of, we, 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 we sort of foreshadow that some bad ominous things are going to happen, but in general, um, the idea is to kind of like slowly kind of like let you into this world and then, when the bad stuff happens, you know, you understand what's at stake for this mother who is only trying to do what any parent would do, which is save her sick child. Mm -hmm. and, the, and then, then like, but then you understand her dilemma too, you know, that she's not just a good mom trying to save her child, but she's a, she's like a, a mom with a, a flawed person, a flawed mother trying to That's right. save her her own her child and and that struggle that she's sort of dealing with in terms of trying to do the right thing by her kid but also not screw up the losing both of them you know what i mean mm -hmm. um, and then you know so i love how that i loved how it it caught me off guard too when i first read the script you know like what is this movie blood is a reference to both human blood in your body but also the blood that connects us as as family right so totally that kind of combination to me was very interesting and what i liked about it from the get-go was that it sort of straddled two genres one being like as you said more of a family human drama like even uh -huh. like a medical drama and the other being a more straightforward like genre vampire story or a horror horror story and finding that way to kind of merge those two things together i guess it sort of becomes more straight out horror by the end um 
but yeah, I like a. I'm 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 always good for a slow burn myself. There's yeah, because sometimes you get hit too much or too quickly, and it's just like you don't get a chance to. I I call it the movie breath. You know, like you don't get a chance to breathe. Almost, it just hits you, hits you, and it just yeah. overwhelms you. But like this, you kind of ease into it. You know, it's like a takeoff, a slow takeoff instead of yeah. you know. <laughs> Just a slow, yeah, taking going off the runway and then you, you know, yeah. you get your wheels off the tarmac and then you're That's off. That's right. Yeah. I, need I to ease that. into it. Yeah, exactly. That tree was fascinating. Is that was that a real tree, <laughs> made tree? Because I'm like, that that's a cool, scary looking tree, but very uniquely a character almost. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, I wish we could have found an actual tree like that. So no, it was a we created okay. it both digitally and practically but um yeah the tree is meant to be you know in some ways like the uh i don't know the the kind of uh, i mean it's an explanation maybe or part explanation as to what's happening something's in that tree we don't know what i like kind of stories that allow a little bit of mystery i, I think mm -hmm. the best kind of horror the best kind of scares are usually in those places where you don't get too much explanation because it allows your mind to wander, allows your imagination to take over. That's more interesting to me. I mean, we talked about, we toyed with the idea of having more straight out, more more literal explanations as to what's happening to this kid, whether there's a creature in the tree or mm -hmm. cool to just imagine. It's cool to think about what it could be in there. Um, so the tree became, you know, that kind of like, uh, you know, the central, you know, kind of image in the movie in a way. Um, and the kind of thing that ultimately they all end up at by the end um and i just thought you know as a visual thing just sort of really kind of creepy and cool and different um and you know again like the movie's about family and and and, and, it, and there's even a moment in the beginning when they're looking at the the girls looking at the photograph an old photo from like 100 years ago and the mm -hmm. original people lived in the farmhouse and there's the tree in the background but and that time the tree was this lush beautiful thing and now it's become this wizened old dead tree and maybe that's kind of like something about the place is not right you know mm -hmm. i don't know i like i like stories that are, are more tonal than they are like literal expositionally like explained to us i just find that more interesting so this movie's sort of a little more like that i think in, in regards to the supernatural component you know, I mean, I might also, be, there might not even be a supernatural explanation. I mean, maybe he literally the something the dog dog was bit by a bat. The bat the, the dog bit the kid, and now the kid's got whatever the bat had. You it know? could be. I love an open interpretation because I feel like movies like that make you think afterwards. Because if it's kind of straight side, like oh, it's satisfactory, but it's an immediate satisfaction where you kind of don't linger with it. But like this, you linger with it and imagine it, like more scenarios. I always feel like. If there's some mystery or not fully explained thing open to interpretation as a viewer it leaves you more invested in the film in a long run i totally agree i mean that's the, those are the kind of movies i like to watch you know and those are the kind of movies i like to make i mean i've always been drawn to that kind of storytelling um you know and i think it, certainly you know if you're into films and into filmmaking and you know as a as a not just as a mere entertainment, but as something to kind of really wrap your head around them. You know, you want, you want to have a movie that works on a number of levels. It's not just like a straight out thing, you know? I mean, those movies are fun too, you know, like the yeah. Blumhouse movies where it's a little more like, this is what it is. Jump scares, whatever. I like those films as well. I just personally like to do stuff that works. That's a little more psychologically driven, you know, um, yeah. a little less straight, a little less literal, I guess. Well, speaking of psychologically driven, one of my favorite movies of all time is The Machinist, you know, and that's you talk oh, about yeah. a psychologically driven movie. Right. How do you yeah, I feel like this movie still resonates when you look back at it years ago. It kind of stays with you. Like it, it's sort of a timeless movie in, in, in an interesting way. Just probably mm -hmm. you just remember Christian's performance and, and you know and kind of the story in itself. How do you feel like the movie has, in a sense, aged over the years? I feel like it's still one of those movies you just don't forget. You know, it's, it's visually yeah. jarring in your mind, no matter what you think about it, you, the name, you hear it, and just like, bam, it takes you right there to it. That's interesting. I, there is something, when we made it, it was, it was set in a kind of timeless sort of 
place and time. You know, in other words, like we did, we it was sort of a the city, the world that this character is in, the the, the environment was sort of a like a kind of a, every. It was like a generic city and a generic time. It, um, you know, he works at a machine shop. Like that seems like so such a turn of the century thing. You know, it's like it's yeah. a weird thing that doesn't really fit easily and and in that sense it's almost like you know like a parable right or a, or a or a or a like a like a like a story that that that's told like like a parable like a fairy tale even you know like those things are timeless you know they don't ever age um and i think i like that kind of those kind of stories like that that aren't locked into a specific time and place and since that movie very much plays from his perspective, you're kind of like in his weird fever dream. You can kind of get away with that. It's not meant to be like, it's meant to be a little hallucinogenic, if you will. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in that sense, it can, it probably, those are the things, those are the kind of stories that you can watch years later and still kind of not get caught up in the fact that it's, you know, people are on old cell phones that are the size of, you know, you know, <laughs> right um yeah so i i uh yeah i think you're right uh it's cool i i, I think uh i think that movie does um uh has cert stand stood the test of time to a certain degree it certainly has you know and I, like i said i followed your career and it's interesting because you've delved into a lot of television too you know you've directed a lot of tv shows too and obviously the films too how is that you know i find you to be a very open-minded director in a sense you know because sometimes just directors stick with film or, or television but you've tackled different genres different everything really you've done it all. has that been your sort of approach or as you've kind of grown in this industry as you've in a sense aged it or been around a long time you wanted to dabble and try different things because i'm pretty fascinated how you've really been kind of open-minded i guess in your yeah. career to doing a lot of different things yeah you're right exactly i like to I think to, I like to be versatile in the kind of stories I tell or the kind of projects I do. I don't like to, I mean, I tend, you know, my, I guess my movies tend to be a certain tonality. They're not like bright mm -hmm. romantic comedies, although my first movies were that way. Um, you know, so I, I, and then television gives me the opportunity to, to play in a sandbox that I would never play in normally. You know, I did, I do episodes of TV shows that aren't necessarily even the kind of shows I watch, but it's fun to do, mm. uh, tell different kinds of stories, work with actors, work in a tone or a palette that you're, you're not necessarily going to do on your own. So I do both. Yes. Yeah, so I, I mean, some of it's out of necessity, like I got to work and I like working I like being behind the camera. I'm not always having the, the opportunity to make a movie because movies have to get set up. You got to get actors, you got to get financing right. it takes time sometimes. And while you're waiting, you're, you're doing a pilot or you're doing an episode or whatever. And, and yeah, frankly, television right now is so good. A lot of it's so good. It's on par with any movie. I mean, the show, I just did an Apple show called Invasion, which was like... Oh, yeah. You know, like I'm a fan. I like it. Dopey, you know, like sci-fi, like lots of special effects. And, you know, like any other, you know, 20, 15 years ago, it would have been like the biggest movie on the planet. Now it's just like an, another Apple show, you know? Um, so, but I think the quality of, as we all know, the quality of television has gone up. So when you work in TV, you don't feel like you're, you know, kind of like, you know, moonlighting, doing some crappy thing. You're doing some good, good work. Um, but yeah, I like, I, I genre hop. I like doing different things. I mean, I, that's what I liked about this movie is that it was like, you know, I hadn't done anything like more of a, like a little bit of a monster movie kind of mm -hmm. sensibility to it before necessarily. So, you know, with kids and so it had elements that were, for me, new, you know, and different. And the, the movie I'm doing now is something I've never done before. It's about a deaf cop or a cop who's lost his hearing, who's who, who's trying to protect a, a young woman, who a young deaf woman from these bad guys. So it's like more of a thriller, more of a straight out like cop thriller. Um, and it's something that I've never done before. I So I've never done a movie with that's mostly signing. <laughs> you know, it's mostly mm -hmm. people signing. So that'll be like a new experience. Yeah, I like, I mean, I, I love the, what's great about the business is every time you do something, it's like you're introduced to this new world, this new, new, and new actors you've never worked with. You meet new people, you go to different places and get to tell these stories. It's, it's like, I don't want to do the same thing again and again and again. I mean, yeah. 
Um, yeah, I'm excited you're walking with, you're working with Joel Kinnaman. Uh, one of my favorites too. What a great actor, great guy too to talk to. Um, that's, guy, yeah. I'm excited to see you guys collaborate together. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, he's cool. He's a really cool guy. Um, yeah, so that's it. I like to I like working with people like Joel and good actors and people who are as passionate about making good, telling good stories as I want to be. You know, you've you've told him for a while. He said I've been a longtime fan and always interested to see what's next. I know there's seems like there's a lot on your slate coming up now, at least for IMDb checks. I was I was checking out like what are the upcoming things. So. I'm excited to see what's next, but this was super interesting too. The blood, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I thought it had a lot of cool elements, genre mixing, uh, mm. another fantastic performance from Michelle, which is a given at this point. And, yeah. uh, and yeah, I'm glad you did it. So, um, Thanks. Hey, Appreciate it. keep on being creative and open-minded to different things. Good, good, good things happen. Well, great talking to you. I appreciate it. You too, Brad. Hope we catch up again. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Hey, enjoy Malta, and uh, I'm going to be interested in seeing what's going to come out of there. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. All right. Uh...